All right, so this is something uh, kind of cool that we just finished. This is a a big banner, kind of a sign uh, for one of the local cities here. Um, it's made out of, uh, it's all fabricated out of aluminum. It's basically just a quarter inch piece of uh, plate aluminum and uh, we cut it all out on the water jet and then we just took a, <clears throat> a grinder with a little buffer pad on it and kind of did a little grinder art all the way down it. So what we're doing here is uh, we're about to spray paint this thing. We're going to put some kind of a custom little candy that I mixed up. It's I just took some satin clear and uh, mixed in some transparent tinter to make kind of a, a medium like a golden brown color. You see me there, I'm just kind of getting it clean, just wiping it down with wax and grease remover. I was actually kind of lucky that this sign even fit into our paint booth. We had about six inches to spare. It's, my paint booth is 24 foot on the inside, 24 foot long by 14, and this sign was 23 and a half feet. So that's why I can't get the whole thing even in the frame. The camera is actually literally all the way back in the corner of the booth. So this is just one part of the whole project. Um, what we're gonna do, you're gonna see now, is we're gonna paint the back. I guess we'd call it the backer. Um, on the front there, we have some um, aluminum fabricated channel letters that are uh, gonna go on the front. You'll see all that when it's uh, at the end of the video. So now we're back after the world's fastest wardrobe change. Let's get my airline down now. <clears throat> got my paint gun. I'm using a DeVilbus um, GTI Pro Lite. Uh, it's got a 1.2 mil tip on it and a TE20 air cap. So that product you see me right there, we can't really see them out of the frame, but it's a, uh, it's a clear primer, and that's what you use for if you want to do clear directly over bare metal without any type of a color, uh, non-transparent primer. And what it is basically is just a, almost a spray adhesive. And there you go, you get a little screenshot of it. It's a spray adhesive, so you just spray it down and kind of let it flash off for about 15 to 20 minutes and then you can spray your paint right over it and you won't have any adhesion problems. Just take a sec, get my gun set up here. Do a last little cleaning. You can never be too clean. I usually will clean up whatever I'm painting two, sometimes three times. Blow it, give it a good blow off with compressed air, and then wax and grease remover, and then usually twice, sometimes three times over with the tack rag. And even then, sometimes you get it. It's one or two specks of dust in it. Keeping the inside of the booth clean is really important too. You can see the walls look really dirty right now, but 
I just gave the floor of that booth a good sweep out and uh, vacuumed it and hosed it down with some water just to keep the dust from, you know, when the airline flops around on the floor, it won't kick up any dust. Anyway, that primer is pretty easy to put on. It has almost no film build. It, it's almost like it just gets absorbed into the metal. So you don't have to be super careful with your... Uh, I mean, you want a nice even coat, but, you know, if you have a little overlap here or, uh, here or there, it's not going to make any difference on the final finish. speed this up. I tried to cut down the, this video. It ended up being I, all the footage I took was more than two hours long. I kind of edited out all of the uh, non-important <laughs> and or boring. So. Primer's done. So we've given that now about 20, 25 minutes to uh, to flash off. Uh, right now, I just I got my paint mixed up, uh, my tinted clear. Get my gun set up a little bit here. can't see me I'm out of the frame but I'm just adjusting making small adjustments and doing um, a test spray pattern I've got a big uh, panel on the wall there that I use for test patterns can't read that. I think that's 1.8, usually 27, 26 pounds of what that gun runs at. I was actually really nervous about this project. I've never, I've sprayed some candy before in my life, but never something, such a big, large, flat panel. And anybody who's tried to spray, like, a tinted clear knows that it can be kind of tricky because the paint changes color depending on how thick it is. But it all turned out okay. Just going around real quick and edge up the panel. And I'm using a vertical spray pattern where my fan is set up horizontally and I'm, I'm spraying it vertically up and down just so that I can spray the whole entire panel in one go without having anywhere that, you know, my two, um, I would have anywhere where the, uh, the paint would overlap too much. I'm just kind of going down. This is not a real heavy coat, just medium wet. Trying to get it down nice and even. What I'm doing now, really, I'm just trying to figure out what my overlap needs to be on each pass. It can vary with different paints, different colors, or different thicknesses. So sometimes it's 50% overlap. I know on each successive pass would overlap 
over the last one, or sometimes it's up to 70%. Depends. Sometimes silvers can be uh, hard to cover, so you'd overlap them a bit more. I think when I painted this, though, it was just dead 50% overlap, and it turned out okay. There was a couple of spots. I, if there's one spot on the bottom there when I etched up that panel that I accidentally painted the same spot twice. It's slightly darker, but nobody noticed. I didn't say anything. <laughs> First coat done. I usually just give this about five, maybe ten minutes in between coats. This is satin too, so it's kind of nice. You can tell when it's completely flashed off because the sheen of the paint obviously changes from high gloss when it's wet down to a satin. There we go. So it's all flashed off now. Ready to spray the second coat. We're going to do a total of four coats. When you do um, just clear right over bent metal, you usually have to do four, maybe five coats. Um, just because you don't have any of a substantial primer. So the, the paint kind of soaks into the metal. And if you don't get enough on there, it will have a, kind of a modely not quite an even finish after it dries. So this pass just the same as before. <clears throat> it's just a medium wet coat. The main thing I'm just really concentrating right now is just to keep my overlap really dead on. It has to be even. Otherwise if you overlap too much or not a little it'll come out looking tiger striped you'll have spots stripes. In this case it would be vertical stripes that would be darker and lighter. Second coat done. Just take a little bit, edge up my, uh, the feet, the legs. I think those legs are not even going to be even seen. This, uh, the bottom edge of that panel is going to be mounted in the ground, ground level. And um, I'm just kind of painting those legs just to keep them protected from corrosion. So I went back, uh, topped off my paint, gave our second coat a few minutes to flash, and uh, coat number three, I'm going to start slowing down here quite a bit, I'm going to try and really get a good film bill on the paint, and you'll see it's about to get really dark too when I start laying the paint down a bit heavier.
paint we're using here is from a company called Matthews, and uh, it's a it's a daughter company of PPG, um, but it's just a, a standard urethane um, kind of an automotive style paint. Um, they have a lot of specialized products for doing stuff like this. Mm that you wouldn't find in most of the uh, automotive paint, paint uh, mixing systems. But it's good paint. It dries extremely hard. It's really good out in the weather, so you can paint something and let it sit out in the weather for four, five, six years, and it holds up just fine. You have to excuse the shakiness on this video. When I was recording this, I've got a little shelf in the corner of that, the back of the booth right there, and I just set the camera on there. But when the booth is running, it, the walls of it kind of vibrate, so it was shaking the camera. And that's why it almost looks like it's got heat waves in it or something. But lesson learned. I originally videotaped this just honestly as a training tool for myself um, just because I'm the only painter uh, at the shop where I work and I don't really have anybody to bounce ideas off of so I thought well, I just watch myself and I can see if I'm you know doing something right or doing something wrong and maybe where I can improve and showed my wife one evening I was like handed her my phone she watched the video and I was like, yeah, that's what I did at work today. And she says, ah, oh, that's really cool. You should make a YouTube video. So here we go. It's going on YouTube. And this is our fourth and final coat of the the uh, the candy clear after I uh, finished painting this I didn't record it but I ended up putting on two more coats of just regular non tinted satin clear over the top of it because as it dried it started to go uh, with satins if you don't have enough of a film build on the paint the finish the satin finish doesn't dry perfectly even um, and it started to go a little bit uneven as it dried so I ended up just putting it right back in the booth and I slapped on two more coats of just regular clear with no tinter in it and uh, it came out really nice after that. Final inspection. Here you get a little close-up view of what it looks like. I was pretty happy with it when it was done. It looks real sharp when it gets out in the sunlight. It's not something you see every day anyway. I like, I like doing stuff like that, you know? Who wants a boring day at the office?
Okay, so here we have, uh, I think this is the next day after I painted the uh, vase. Um, you didn't see, but what I've done now is uh, we welded the letters onto the front of that um, the sign, the panel that we already painted. Um, we had these set of letters that went on there and they had a little dowel that poked through to the back. So we put those on there and then we plug welded them on the back side ground down all the welds flush and then re redid the little um, kind of a grinder art on the back so all of the lettering on the front of this big banner has no visible fasteners it's just it's all welded together as one piece so we got it back in the booth and we're just uh, we're painting the back sorry I uh, didn't get any video of doing the first coat I uh, it was just I think in a hurry and forgot after the first coat I says oh man I need to take some video but it was pretty standard it was basically exactly the same as what we did on the front So I've just sped up all of this footage um, two and a half times. Anyway, it's uh yeah the, the process is exactly the same as the front. I was actually a little unhappy with the first coat I laid down. I was trying a new spray pattern that a uh, different overlap pattern that would build up the paint, kind of thicker. Anyway, it was a bright idea that I, something I'm not used to doing, and it, yeah, it didn't turn out very well. So halfway down the panel on that first coat, I just switched back to how I would normally paint it. And so the, on the back of this, there were a couple spots that were slightly darker, but that's the back. As you can see, after doing that, watching that first video, I couldn't believe this, how dirty the inside of my paint booth was. As soon as I got done with that, that paint in the front of this thing, man, I shut down shop for half a day and I cleaned all the walls of the paint booth and changed all the filters, replaced all the lights. I've been long overdue for some rehab in there. Just going back, touching up little spots in that corner where those posts were welded on. It was kind of a little light spot. You'll get that on like an inside corner. Um, anyways, oh, so here you can see that's the front. So it's the satin clear on the background and then 
this uh, the downtown um, lettering. It's a hand fabricated aluminum, and it's got kind of a I just hand did that brush finish with some um, 320 grit sandpaper, and then cleared them just with standard gloss, high gloss clear. And they looked, um, yeah, they looked pretty good when they were done. It's gonna look sharp. I can't wait to drive it down the road and see that one. Anyways, so that's it. That's the process. If anybody has any questions, leave me a comment. I'll get back to you. And thanks for watching.